South America is one of the deadliest places on earth. From tiny frogs no larger than your fingertip, poisonous enough to bring down entire elephants, to fish lurking beneath the waters, capable of stripping flesh to bone in minutes, danger is never far away. Being stranded here without civilization almost guarantees a grim fate for any unlucky traveler. But if you need more proof that this land is best left untouched, consider its apex predators. The jaguar, whose bite force is twice as powerful as a lion's, or the black caiman, a giant crocodilian who hunts specifically when you can't see them, at night. This land is home to some of the most dangerous animals alive today, yet its current state is relatively relaxed when compared to the animals that once lived there. In fact, prehistoric South America was so terrifying that it can trigger not just every phobia you have, but also the ones you never even knew existed. Like isolophobia, or the fear of being alone. Because if you were to find yourself on this ancient continent, you'd be separated from the rest of the world by hundreds, if not thousands of miles of ocean. But possibly the most chilling aspect of this isolation is that from about the extinction of the dinosaurs to about 3 million years ago, it was a landmass full of creatures unlike anything that lives there today. And one thing is for certain, when evolution gets a little too much alone time, strange things start to happen. Two living examples of this are Australia and Madagascar. From gorilla-sized lemurs, kangaroos taller than grown men, and monitor lizards the size of SUVs, their total isolation has produced some of the weirdest animals throughout history. But both of these places would seem like a vacation compared to South America, especially for a person with ophidiophobia, or the fear of snakes. Given that, this place was full of them, and they were enormous, like Titanoboa, one of the first gigantic predators to appear after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Taking advantage of all the open niches, this snake became the largest to have ever existed. Putting the previous record of largest snake to shame by growing to a size that was longer than a bus, stretching an incredible 42 feet long. It was also a meter wide, as it was surrounded in a massive amount of muscle, accumulating in a snake so large that just slithering past you, it would easily be over half your height. During its life, it dominated the steamy swamps and rivers of the ancient tropical rainforests, where it would have traveled through the rivers in search for anything from fish to other snakes, to turtles, and even crocodiles. Though some recent discoveries point more towards a preference for massive fish. Regardless, anything the snake got a grip on really didn't stand a chance. Much like the modern anaconda, the titanoboa would have killed by using its powerful body to wrap around and constrict its prey. Doing this so tightly, blood flow would halt between an animal's brain, heart, and lungs before swallowing them whole. For those that fear snakes, it's clear South America would have been an absolute nightmare. But for anyone with a more general phobia of reptiles, being trapped with Freddy Krueger might seem like an appealing alternative. Because in prehistoric South America, giant land crocodilians were some of the most fearsome apex predators. This was a lineage of animals known as the Sebecids, a group of crocodiliforms characterized by their terrestrial adaptations like long legs. And one of these animals, known as Baranasuchus, roamed the savannas and forests of Middle Miocene Argentina in Venezuela, growing so large that even to this day, it remains the largest pure terrestrial predator to have ever lived after the dinosaurs. With estimated sizes reaching 20 feet long and a weight between 3,500 to 3,800 pounds, this size rivals that of an adult Allosaurus and far exceeds the largest predator on land today, the polar bear, which tops out at only around 1,700 pounds. But it's not just their size that made them so deadly, as they possess teeth remarkably similar to those of the theropods, the ancient clade of animals that includes T. rex, as their teeth were compressed laterally curved facing backwards, and had serrated borders, perfect for tearing apart flesh. In addition, they had long legs positioned directly under their body, enabling them to move with quick bursts of speed. These adaptations were perfect for ambushing unsuspecting prey, like the nautoungulates, a diverse group of mammals found only in South America, that range in size from the rhino-sized toxodons to the dog-sized notocylops. These real-life monsters would have certainly found themselves at the top of the food chain, but they wouldn't be there alone. Sitting right by their side would have been predators from a supposedly bygone era. 
inducing both dinophobia, the fear of dinosaurs, and ornithophobia, the fear of birds. These were the Forest Rockus, the closest the dinosaurs ever got to reclaiming their position at the top of the food chain. As this was a genus of flightless predatory birds, which dominated throughout South America for almost its entire history. And while these animals didn't start off huge, their later descendants were absolutely monstrous, and would become the only birds to ever hold the title of apex predators on land, earning them their famous nickname of the terror birds. But what makes these animals possibly even more frightening than the dinosaurs is that they possess just enough similarities to their extinct relatives to provoke a deep primordial fear, while also having enough differences to make them a new horror entirely. For one, terror birds didn't have teeth, but don't think that's a good thing, because their primary weapons were giant hooked beaks and a strong neck, so instead of biting, they'd smash their head down like an axe stabbing and pecking over and over again with their knife-like beaks, striking so hard that even their skulls had to fuse together, forming a solid mass of bone durable enough to withstand their powerful attacks. Alternatively, they'd be able to do just as much damage with their powerful legs that were equipped with enormous claws, claws that were specifically built to slash into prey and to clench onto its victims. Klenkin argued to be the tallest of the terror birds grew to a whopping 9.8 feet tall and possibly weighed in around 550 pounds, making it about the same weight as a male grizzly bear. Its head was also the largest of any bird at over 2 feet long. Comparing this to the shoebill, the bird with the largest head alive today, it's clear to see just how massive Kalenkin really was, with its skull more comparable to the size of a small saltwater crocodile. But even with these gigantic adaptations, the Kalenkin was also built for speed, reaching up to 35 miles per hour while some of his relatives were capable of just under 50. That's comparable to the speed of an ostrich. Now, the frightening distinction between the two is that while the ostrich evolved its speed to flee from animals, the terror birds developed theirs to run towards them. But don't be fooled into thinking the carnivores were the only phobia-inducing aspect of ancient South America, as the horror of staring face-to-face -face with these giant sloths would be a heart-wrenching experience for anyone. And giant is no exaggeration, with some individuals growing as large as the elephant, reaching up to 20 feet long and weighing over 4 tons. Looking at their remains today proves just how gargantuan they really were, with their bulky bodies, robust bones, short necks, powerful chest, and massive jaws accumulating in one of the largest megafauna of the Cenozoic. And when you get that large, you'd think that'd be enough to keep you safe. But the giant ground sloths, well, they thought differently, as they also sported three gigantic and sharp claws on each of their hands, measuring up to 12 inches, and just a single swipe could easily end whatever they hit. However, the most important aspect of these blades was surprisingly foraging, because when you're as big as an elephant, you're going to need a ton of food. And they would do this by standing on their hind limbs, reaching up to pull down tree branches, and stripping off the leaves to fuel their massive bodies. But if this wasn't enough, some ground sloths even had a protective coat of rough brown fur with nickel-sized bone plates underneath their skin. Scientists call these plates dermal ossicles, or bone skin while others had adaptations that would make anyone with thalassophobia or the fear of deep water have an instant heart attack. Because some ground sloths were semi-aquatic, spending much of their life submerged in the deep prehistoric waters. The ground sloths are one of the most fascinating groups of animals to come out of the strange evolution of isolated South America. And trust me, it doesn't end here, as there are countless other animals that resemble nothing like the ones that are alive today. Anyways, hopefully this video didn't induce too many new phobias, but thank you for watching, let me know down below what you think, or if I messed anything up, but as always, Jehona out.